You've seen a little of the variety of Nigerian life. The job of holding the country in together. Jubilation. This the day we've been, been waiting to celebrate. Nigeria is free. A Valewa. Now this is the new 100 Naira notes, and at the back of it, it's a quick response code, which when scanned, leads users to a website about Nigeria's history. Now this new note was designed and released on November 12, 2014 to celebrate 100 years of Nigeria's existence as a country. On it is written the words, One Nigeria, Great Promise. Now buckle up, I want to tell you about that great promise. It is rich in resources, it's got Africa's biggest population, and it's enjoyed democracy since 1999. But... I love my country, Nigeria. To understand Nigeria and her problems, we have to look at history and understand how Nigeria came to be in the first place. Start the story with the failure of the African state and not with the colonial creation of the African state, and you have an entirely different story. Nigeria gained her independence on October 1st, 1960, from the British. With a smile, British sovereignty is surrendered to the Prime Minister. He said Nigerians proudly acclaim Queen Elizabeth as Queen of Nigeria, head of the Commonwealth. get a bit of context on the events that led up to the October 1st, 1960 independence of Nigeria, we need to go back to the 17th century. Then the industrial frontier was pierced. With the development of the railroads, scattered communities were drawn together. Commerce was stimulated. America needed things, all kinds of things. And the frontiersmen of industry found new, faster, better ways of supplying these things. Machines replaced hands. New machines replaced old machines. New inventions, the electric light, automobile, telephone, started as luxuries, then as they were made better and cheaper, became commonplace. Modern agriculture and building machinery released men to man the new production machinery. America became the industrial empire of the world, a vast factory working day and night to meet a seemingly endless demand. Production was a problem. It went up, 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 faster, faster, faster. So the year is 1760 and the Industrial Revolution has just started in Europe. There was a massive boom in production of goods, machines were invented, they were, there, there, there was an increase in the use of steam power and water power, textiles and all, in fact, overall technological and agricultural innovations, you know. The production boom and growth was so massive, the Europeans overproduced goods and consequently they needed to find new markets. Also, they needed new lands fertile for agriculture and so they decided to Rolling drone. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah, you guessed right. They decided to invade Africa. So as this foreign country invaded the continent and started stealing and killing the indigenous people, the countries often had clashes among themselves and this event is historically known as a scramble for Africa, which I find quite dodgy. Um, perhaps a more appropriate term would be the Great Continental Heist, because this is because the term scramble for Africa does not capture the full scope of the atrocities committed by the European invaders and it does not evoke the moral and emotional response that this event deserves. And this goes to show how language can be a tool for manipulation, propaganda and control. Now we must be forthright in calling it what it is, a heist on a continental scale. Now back to our story. To settle the clashes between these invading countries, in the year 1884 and 1885, the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck called for a conference between these countries and they sat down at the table with the map of Africa and they carved up the continent, giving it as property to one another. Mind you, no single African was present at this conference.
This would then go down in history as the Berlin Conference of 1885. Now, this is a map of Africa before that conference. And this is a map of Africa after the conference. The countries then took their weapons and swept in to claim their new territories. Great Britain controlled Egypt, South Africa, Nigeria, and Ghana. The French occupied vast expanses of West Africa. The Germans controlled modern-day Tanzania as well as Namibia. The Italians controlled Somalia and Libya, while the Portuguese controlled Angola and Mozambique. What we know now as Nigeria was originally called the Northern and Southern Protectorates by Great Britain. Northern and Southern Protectorates. Protectorates. Curious to know what protectorate means? Well, it is gotten from the word protector. So the Northern and Southern Nigeria were under, were under the protection of the British. Protection from what, you may ask? Well, the word protectorate is just a fancy way of saying everything within these lands are under our watch. We will use up the resources therein as we see fit. Fellow invaders, keep up. Any attempt of liberation shall be met with the full might of our brute force. Now, by the year 1914, Frederick Lugard, who was Governor General of the two protectorates, decided to merge them together to form what is now known as Nigeria. This event is historically known as the 1914 Amalgamation. Now, in his words, Amalgamation, in my view, was not a mere political, geographical, or more especially, a financial expression. I regarded it, rather, as a means whereby each part of Nigeria should be raised to the highest level of the highest plane attained by any particular part. Thus, regarded each of the two administrations had much to learn from the others. The North, the younger government, was capable of improvement in its departmental organization and backward both in the development of its material resources and of the facilities, such as roads, required for the purpose. The South required a better organization of its native administration and its judicial system. Well, Basically, Lugard saw that our unity would be our greatest strength, so he went for it. By the year 1914, the country Nigeria was born. By 1960, Nigeria gained her independence from the British. Now, Nigeria gained her independence, but never learned how to be independent. And Nigeria never taught us how to be Nigerians, because you can't teach what you don't know, that much is evident. And so the country exploded into chaos. It's been 61 years already, and all we have witnessed is chaos. And more chaos. To answer the question about whether we are truly independent and whether there is anything worth celebrating about Nigeria's independence, I think it's important that we begin by noting that colonialism wasn't a pleasant experience, you know. Like slavery and other systems of domination, colonialism denies the agency of the colonized. As a colonized people, we weren't allowed to act for ourselves. We weren't allowed to decide by what rule and by whom we were governed. Our resources were exploited for the development of the colonialist uh, uh, nation. Our traditional cultural ways were rubbished and the cultural ways of the colonialists became the standard such that uh, educational and economic opportunities were available to individuals depending on how much they have uh, adapted to the colonialist uh, culture. So independence was meant to mean the reclamation of agency, the ability to decide by what rule and by whom we are governed, to decide how we want to use our natural resources for the development of our country, to decide what cultural ways are best for us and to, to adopt the ones we consider best. And to some extent, we, we did make a progress at the dawn of independence. And I think that to not acknowledge this would amount to the denial of the struggle of those who fought for independence. It is common knowledge that the colonialists, the, the colonialists uh, didn't just pack their bags and say, well, we have, we have exploited you guys and now we are leaving now. You know, it took struggle to send them packing in Nigeria as in other uh, colonized uh, countries. But whatever progress that was made was also quickly eroded in the face of the coups and counter-coups that brought in the military uh, dictators and the pseudo-democratic uh, system that emerged afterwards, that I, which I often call a uh, kakistocracy. 
which has led to the occupation of the seats of government by individuals who are not very knowledgeable about nation building and governance, uh, people who are easily tossed by those who still seek to dominate us, not as colonialists now, but as neo-colonialists. So that uh, today we are confronted with staggering evidence showing that we are not yet a free people. The mainstay of our economy, the, the crude oil is still controlled mainly by foreigners. Those who rule us, especially at the topmost seats, still need to be anointed by some foreign agencies. And this was again revealed by the recent confession of uh, Komodo Laumi. The colonialist uh, language is still the only official means of communication. And the implication of this is that a great bulk of our people are shut out of uh, national uh, conversations. And the chaos that we witness in our country today is not unconnected to all of this. And so it would appear that there is no reason to, to celebrate. But I think that there is reason to be hopeful. The rising consciousness among young people particularly and the growing momentum of the resistance movement, the expression of which we saw in the Hensas protest and the subsequent uh, actions that have followed, uh, gives me hope. And so I, I, I think that it is fitting that we take the moment to celebrate the gains of the independence struggle while we also use the opportunity to build momentum for the resistance movement and also uh, reflect on the, the, the journey ahead. Yes, Nigeria is plagued with problems on all sides. Yes, the country is not safe. But we have made these stories our only stories. Everyone is on a mission to promote the narrative that nothing good can come out of Nigeria and the country is a place of negatives when in reality, Nigerians are the most educated, resilient, hardworking, and successful people on the planet. For everyone's karma, we have a hundred geniuses. Now, um, enough of the rambling, let's look at the facts. In the UK alone, there are over 8,737 Nigerian trained doctors. In August of 2021, the Saudi Arabian government sent delegates from their Ministry of Health. They set up at um, Sheraton Hotel in Abuja, which is the capital city of Nigeria put out advertisements, then went on to recruit Nigerian-trained medical doctors and specialists in their numbers, granting them immediate visas and flights to go and start working for them. Now, this was at the time when Nigerian doctors were protesting non-payment of salaries, you know. This is just classic opportunistic behavior. All this leaves me wondering why these world powers are rushing to recruit people trained under substandard conditions to go and work in their world-class facilities. The current Minister for Justice in Canada, Casey Madden, is a Nigerian-trained lawyer, studied at the University of Lagos and Nigerian Law School. He is said to be the first black man to ever hold the office. Now, if I start mentioning the Nigerians all over the world, trained in Nigeria and championing different sectors, this video may never end. The point of all this is to provide a balance of stories. As with all countries, Nigeria is faced with problems, but that is not all. These so-called first world countries promote the narrative of Nigeria and Africa being a place of negatives and only fraud and disease comes out of Africa. Yet, they turn around to lobby for our Nigerian trained professionals to work in their world-class facilities. This is a wickedly irreconcilable irony, if you ask me. Just like in the colonial days, all they have done is steal, keep stealing, and until there's nothing left to steal, they will keep stealing. Education in Nigeria is one of the cheapest in the world. Thousands of people earn degrees every year. Now, this is not to say that we don't have a role to play in our current misfortune. That would be ridiculous. We are a rich nation ruled by old, bloodthirsty leeches whose only competence and proficiency is corruption, theft, and everything speakable. One Nigeria. Great promise. Long live Nigeria. If you found this video informative, please hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Thank you.